Rescuing animals, as we have seen in the previous video, is only one way we can help animals in the wild. In this video, we will see some ways they get medical treatment when they are sick or injured. Then we'll see some examples of caring for orphaned animals. Finally, we'll see some cases where hungry or thirsty animals have been helped. Sarcoptic mange is a skin disease caused by burrowing parasitic mites. It affects several species of non-human mammals, including dogs, cats, coyotes, bears, and wombats. Wombats are especially badly affected by mange. It is believed that this is due to the conditions inside wombat burrows being conducive to the survival and transmission of sarcoptic mites. Infested wombats lose hair, their skin becomes crusted and infected, and their eyes and ears become crusted over. In severe cases, it can lead to death. Infested wombats are generally treated with a medication called moxidectin, but the stress of capture can kill wombats, especially when they are in a weakened state. So the treatment is usually administered using a specially designed flap placed above the entrance to the wombat's burrows. White nose syndrome is a fungal disease that infects bats. Since 2007, it has killed more than 6 million bats in North America. The mortality rate is higher than 90% in some species. The disease disrupts bats' hibernation, causing them to either starve to death by using up all their fat stores or to die of exposure while trying to find food in winter. In 2019, bats were treated with a probiotic bacterium, which increased their survival rate from 8 to 46%. Although the motivation to find a cure comes from conservationist interests, widespread application could nonetheless significantly reduce suffering and premature death among bats. Probiotic treatment may also be valuable in treating diseases in other species. Another fungus affecting amphibians has a devastating effect, killing millions of animals across more than 500 species. Infected amphibians show symptoms such as low appetite, lethargy, and thickening of the skin, which leads to death because affected animals are unable to take in nutrients and release toxins through their skin. Some amphibians breathe through their skin, and once infected, they may be unable to breathe. In 2016, boreal toads were treated with a probiotic which increased their survival rate by 40%. Probiotics may be used in the future to treat or protect amphibians susceptible to the disease. Research on the possibility of probiotic treatments for a fungal disease in snakes and another in honeybees is also underway. Probiotics have also been used to inhibit infections in different species of fishes. Probiotics have the potential to significantly improve the welfare of many animals living in the wild by protecting them against diseases or by mitigating their effects. Animals living in the wild are frequently injured in conflicts or accidents. For example, they may be injured during fights with other animals. They can be injured by predation, fighting to defend their territory, to secure resources in conflicts over mating partners, or to attain a higher social standing within a group. In some species, females are often injured by males in forced copulation. And as with humans, wild animals can become injured in accidents, either in the normal course of their lives in the wild or because of human structures, such as roads or windows. But it is often possible to treat their injuries. Animals in the wild are sometimes territorial. Often they can defend their territory with ritualized aggression, for example, by intimidating displays, vocalizations, and gestures. Sometimes, however, they are forced to fight to defend their territory, and this can result in serious injuries. Broken limbs are a frequent occurrence among animals in the wild. And without intervention, they are often a death sentence because the injured animal is less capable of finding food and evading predators. Limbs can be broken in accidents or through conflict with other animals. If treated, animals can often make a full recovery. A broken wing is usually fatal for wild birds and other flying animals. Most are relatively easy to treat, however. Birds and bats who are brought to wild animal rehabilitation centers usually make a full recovery. It's even possible to fix a broken insect wing at home, like those of butterflies, who frequently lose them. Animals in the wild who receive parental care sometimes lose one or both parents. In such circumstances, it's unlikely that they will survive. Most orphaned animals will starve to death, die of dehydration, or be eaten by predators. The small number of orphans who do survive often undergo terrible hardships. For evolutionary reasons, most animals die shortly after coming into existence. It's difficult for very young animals to survive. Most newborn animals receive no parental care, which increases their risk of dying. 
but those who do receive parental care may be so dependent on it that they losing it means almost certain death. Moreover, many non-human animals have strong emotional bonds with their families, and they miss their parents and feel grief when they die. Social animals who are or orphaned can also suffer from loneliness because they are deprived of the social interaction that is so essential to their well-being. Fortunately, humans can assist orphaned animals by rescuing them and providing them with the care they need. Examples of currently existing wild animal orphanages include rhino orphanage, which was established in 2001 in South Africa. Elephants can be orphaned too because of drought, poaching, or by becoming trapped in mud, for example. The Sheldrick Wildlife Trust cares for orphaned elephants and rhinos, and so far they have successfully raised 244 orphaned elephants and 17 rhinos. The Sinkwekwe Center in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is a sanctuary for the care and protection of orphaned mountain gorillas and eastern lowland gorillas. Gorilla infants are extremely dependent upon their mothers and are unlikely to survive on their own if their mothers are killed. There are other animals who don't receive parental care. They are typically born in large numbers and die shortly after coming into existence. An example is sea turtles. The number of them who reach adulthood is very low. In some cases, however, it is possible to provide them with help. People have made efforts to help baby turtles survive. One way is to help the hatchling turtles to reach salt marshes or the sea, which are safer than the areas surrounding their nest. These measures are typically taken because of conservationist concerns, but they help the animals involved. The previous cases demonstrate that humans have the ability, and in many cases, the desire to help orphaned animals, though it is important to recognize that it is not always done for the good of the individual animals. Another way to help wild animals is by building shelters or other structures for them to use. These structures allow animals to avoid dangerous weather conditions or avoid predators. Many different types of animals build nests for these reasons. However, this may take a long time and will often not be as good as the structure that we could build for them. We can help animals by providing them with suitable, pre-constructed shelters or nests. In addition to protecting them from wind, rain, and other weather conditions, structures can help to regulate the temperature of the animals living in them. The heat that the animals lose through their bodies is partially given back to them because it contributes to warming the structure, rather than being lost as it would normally be. For these reasons, access to this kind of shelter can easily be the difference between life and death for an animal. Structures may also allow animals to avoid predators because they can serve as hiding places that other animals may not notice or cannot reach. The most common type of shelters built by humans is bird boxes. These are commonly used by birds when they start families. If bird boxes aren't cleaned after a family of birds finishes using it, however, diseases and parasites may be spread to a new family of birds. Structures can be built for many other animals as well. For example, bats need a warm place to roost where they can safely sleep, raise their young, and hibernate. They will roost in human buildings when they have good opportunities to do so. Bats living in buildings have been found to be doing much better on quite a few different metrics than those roosting in natural settings. We could build more buildings specifically for bats to use, or we could allow them to use more existing buildings. It has also been found that rabbits can benefit when well-placed and designed artificial warrens are built for them. Invertebrates can also be helped in this way. One species of moth has been found to use leaf rolls that were created by scientists. Other species of arthropods in the area were also found to use these structures. Lack of access to clean water is another source of suffering and a serious risk to the health of, and lives of animals. Wild animals can also be helped when they need water, and it's often easy to do. Water can be left in small containers that are accessible to them. There is a risk to small animals who could fall in and drown, however, so small ladders or other ways of, for them to get out are very important. Water containers also have to be cleaned regularly so they don't transmit diseases from some animals to others. It could be problematic to build very large ponds, which could lead to certain animals such as mosquitoes and other insects reproducing in very large numbers, only to die painfully shortly afterwards due to lack of resources. The insects might also spread diseases and parasites. Another way to help animals is by saving some of them from starving when they face extreme situations of lack of food. In fact, interventions to feed animals in the wild are very common. Circumstances such as severe droughts or harsh winters may mean many animals starve to death. Due to this, animals are sometimes provided with the food they need to survive. 
This is sometimes done in order to conserve certain populations of animals that are particularly appealing to human beings. In other cases, the animals who are saved are ones that have some touristic interest, as when tourists want to watch animals that are typical of a place. For these reasons, supplemental feeding measures are taken in a number of national parks in different countries. Even if these interventions are not carried out with the aim of helping the animals themselves, they end up being positive for them. However, it is important in these cases to be careful not to provide so much food to animals that they reproduce beyond the numbers that populations used to have. Otherwise, more of them will die because there will not be resources for all of them to survive. This is why in many cases it is not a good idea to provide extra food for animals in the wild because it can cause much more suffering in the future as a result of trying to reduce it in the present. In the next video, we'll see another example of intervention that is very positive for massive numbers of animals in the wild. Vaccination.